Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, as the title implies, we're building the fastest ship in the game. And I have found only one hull that's suitable for that. It's going to be a destroyer versus a heavy cruiser from the Germans. A uh, heavy cruiser more so to show you that this design sort of works. It can do 60 knots, which is currently, and currently being uh, July 7th, the top speed in the game. It's the fastest that any ship can go. So let's get to designing. Now I've set unlock all on because you need that. Without this unlock, um, you need to be very specific and I think it has to be a Japanese hull that you need to use. It's the Experimental Destroyer. Displacement 2900 to 3700, that's the hull that you want. For some reason, currently, and currently being Alpha 12 version 86, the maximum displacement for a destroyer is 3500. When I go above that, the game says, no, you don't. Um, you go back to 3500. Whereas the slider can go to 3700. So I think there's still some issues to work out there. So it's entirely possible that um, by the time that you're watching this, if this is, for example, in a year's time, they'll have changed this and you can then build even bigger ships. Uh, the range is going to be none. <laughs> She's not going to go anywhere, but she's going to get there very quickly. Now, of course, the engine is taking up, uh, I think, about 90% of the ship at this point. In order to make that fit, don't go with turbines. Don't go with the double-geared steam turbines, which is what you used to want to run with. But go with diesel 2, because diesel 2 now gives you a weight of 2887. Go with the lightest tower, because this thing is not going to be gunning down anything. Well, not likely. You can try, but it's not really going to be that effective. I'm going to go with the Tower 1. Uh, you can go with Krupp 4 armor, but ideally just strip down all the armor on the ship. This is a complete paper ship. It has no protection anywhere. No reinforced bulkheads. Uh, she has minimum bulkheads, in fact. I can put oil in her to make sure that she's even even lighter because we still need to add a bit more stuff. It is interesting to go with a rear tower uh, 8, but the rear tower 4 is enough for what I have in mind. One thing that I did run into this, uh, well, that I ran into with this ship, her problems are with spotting the enemy. Because you simply do not have the capability of getting a big tower, and that means your longer range spotting capability is severely reduced. A bigger tower just has better spotting capability. A small tower like this doesn't. So um, that, and especially with the secondary tower working together with the main tower, your spotting capability is going to be dreadful. Visibility range, the surface visibility of this ship um, is low. You have a bit of a spotting bonus. The highest mounting tower mounts for 1250, but that is it. So don't expect to be spotting from great range. And at least the way that I'm reading this is the way that you can spot from this ship, not how far away you can get spotted. Because that is something that um, I have already noticed is not great with this ship. You can get spotted from farther away. So now you have your ship. Sort of. She still needs some weapon system. She needs one gun at least. And she needs a torpedo tube, at least one. At this point, you can go with whatever you like, um, to some extent. You can go with a, a triple five inch, and then you, well, you're gonna have a really miniature torpedo launcher for just 24 tons. You can make that work. Um, this way you can have a ship that's pretty capable of running down one single target, but not the heavy cruiser that I have in mind. In the campaign, when and if it eventually comes, well, more of a when than an if, uh, you could have a weird ass ship like this and it can be very quick, but you're not gonna be having any kind of upgrade, none. You're not gonna go for a uh, boost in radar. You're not gonna go, well, you can get radar one. It's gonna give you a bit of a bonus. But for example, putting better loaders on is way too heavy. Uh, putting a rangefinder on, you can sort of fit the, the, the 4 or the 5, but if you want to boost that with a standard rangefinder, well, good luck. Again, armor. Um, 
doable, not recommended. The problem with the armor is it wears you down. And you could, oh, actually, you could put a bit of armor on there. Like an armor belt, which has just the protection of the belt and the belt extender. But even against the smallest guns, one and a half inches of armor, even with a plus 100, is fairly worthless. Because let's say that the enemy has a five inch gun, it will pen you at 10,000 meters. And you will not be able to pen it at 10,000 meters. And in case you're wondering, um, well, I'm going up against transports. Can I not use it? Uh, some transports are armed. And even if they're armed with a four inch or let alone the two inch gun, the two inch gun will pen you at 5,000 meter range. So that armor um, might as well not have it, I think. When it comes to your weaponry, you can also decide that, well, um, maybe I don't want a ship that has a lot of guns. Maybe I want to have just one gun to satisfy the requirement that the game says, hey, you need to have at least one gun. Okay, fine, I'll bring a two inch on the stern and I'm going to put some more firepower into my torpedoes. I can have a quad launcher on the bow, for example. Depending on the size of the torpedoes, you're going to run into trouble with this again. All right, you can go with a triple. A quad is already substantially heavier and does not fit. And a quin, of course, is far over the weight budget. You can also decide to go with fewer funnels. The problem with the fewer funnels is, even with all these funnels and oil 3 and a diesel 2, I'm only using a 58% engine efficiency, that is, engine efficiency. So this ship, um, if she slows down, she's going to have trouble accelerating again. If you remove a couple of funnels, that is going to get progressively worse. I had minus 10% acceleration, now I have minus 44% acceleration. This, of course, does free up more deck space, and this way you can put more torpedoes on or more guns. But the moment that you get hit or take a turn, well, you're going to run into trouble because you will not be able to actually speed back up again. Another issue with the ship I found, um, displacement. And I mean weight offset. A torpedo launcher displaces or is substantially heavier than a gun. And this means that the gun, well, it doesn't really matter where you put it because this thing just contributes very, very little. Unfortunately, you cannot put the funnels further back because the tower two has to be, or the rear tower, the secondary tower has to be the farthest back. This one, the secondary turret, or the, the main gun in this case, um, you can still put the torpedo launcher here, but even then you have an offset. Then again, that offset, not necessarily bad, but it's still not great because any offset is going to interfere with, well, acceleration, turning radius, stuff like that. So try to keep that as low as possible. In my case, if I wanted to be able to torpedo stuff right away, I would try and build a ship that is as, well, as balanced as possible with a torpedo launcher on the bow. Because this way I can torpedo stuff, and especially if I make them fast torps, um, they can torpedo stuff fairly reliably, but most ships that the AI has can turn on a dime and will be very difficult to hit. Right now with a 6.7 longitudinal weight offset, so a bow offset, um, my turning or my speed at max turning rate is going to be a little less. My rudder shift is worse. My acceleration is worse. So let's just put this thing back towards the stern. Uh, and maybe even put it over here. So funnel there. That's still 1.3. And the farther you put it back, the more trouble you run into. The problem that I'm running into right now is that I'll have to go massively broadside in order to launch these torps. Unfortunately, you don't really have an opportunity to, uh, for example, put a torpedo launcher amidships and on the bow, because then you only have your torpedo launchers in a very, let's say, restricted position. Uh, it can work. And currently it gives you the least weight displacement or weight offset, but it's still not fantastic. I can potentially balance it out. Uh, 0.3, I'll take 0.3. 
But for this one, I'm going to go with a dual. And there you go. Immediately you're at 10.6 again. And I cannot upgrade that one. So again, you're running into trouble. Um, you could also, if you want to spend some of that weight on something, go with an auxiliary engine to make sure your ship turns faster or with a pro an improved uh, propeller shaft, which is going to also boost your acceleration and your turning rate. But these things are heavy. So pick wisely if you want to build a really, really fast ship. Even an auxiliary one. <laughs> of course, because the engine weight gets uh, a plus five modifier. Even an auxiliary engine one is too heavy. It does not work. Assist, uh, additional defensive systems don't work. Anti-flood one is too heavy. Good luck with this ship. It's simply too heavy. Most of it is. Let's go with a Raider 1 to at least get a bit more tower spotting. And put the Moffat to the test. Here we go. Enemy spotted to the north. The turning circle on this ship, thanks to the propeller shaft, is a bit less than it was. Um, it was not as good. Look at that drift, though. Just the way that this thing is spinning around. The whole stern is just... <laughs> the whole stern is just coming off of sorts. It's, it's completely thrown out of whack. Uh, imagine trying to having to hit a ship like this. Good luck with that. That's going to be difficult. And this thing with its massive speed, just relies sheerly on being very difficult to hit. So, um, at this point, I have already been detected. I know that there is something out there, but that little something has detected me at a range of 18 kilometers. So the spotting range from my ship, because my tower is so low, is freaking bad. It's really terrible, but my speed is fantastic. So even though I cannot exactly see where something is, I can get to where I can see it very quickly. Because with this 60 knot speed, um, this distance... Where is he? He's over here. 14.2, 14.1, 13.9, 13.8, 7.6, 7.6.5. That's how quickly you could close. This is at a time five, times 5 speed. So that is, of course, a factor. Since this is a DD... You also have a smoke screen. Use it. Especially when you're closing in, pop that smoke screen and make yourself even more difficult to hit. What I find interesting is that this German heavy cruiser has, there we go, has not yet fired at me. Let's see what she has. Uh, 10 7 inch guns and 8 4 inch. Her accuracy, watch this. Her accuracy is going to have a minus 91% offset due to a target fast speed. That was me. My speed is so high that that ship has a really terrible time of hitting me. Its hit chance is 0.5%. Salvo hit any of 10 shells because apparently the ship's capable of firing all 10 shells at the same time. Uh, yep, she's broadside. Is 5%. So effectively, I have, let's say, a 5%, there we go, 5% chance of being hit. Another thing that this ridiculously fast ship has a problem with is getting hit. Not just because it doesn't have any armor, but because any hit will slow you down. Now let's see what happens if I put her into a spin. Currently, she's only uh, penalized by target fast speed. I'm going to be sacrificing some of that speed. You're not supposed to launch those yet. Uh, target maneuver is a minus 88%. That is really high. Her chance to hit me has just dropped to 0.1%. This is what your speed can get you. Unfortunately, if you try and use this speed to get up to a massive amount of speed and just do donuts and wait for the enemy to run out, they're not going to. Because their chance to hit is so low that the AI will simply refuse to fire. So make sure that you give them at least some opportunity to hit you. Uh, in this case, the ship has detected the torp. And unless she has a really terrible time of trying to dodge that, she'll be fine. 
There she goes. This, of course, does turn her guns away from me. Oh, speaking of, I almost got torped by her. By that heavy. That was interesting. That was not supposed to happen, but, well. They almost got me with that. And since this ship is so dedicated to going fast that it is not capable of having much equipment, I did not put a sonar system on there. I think that the Comet is launching Sneaky Torps. Yeah, minus 75%. Let's see, is she still trying to hit me? Chance to hit me currently 3.4%. My target fast speed modifier is still there. If I throw the ship into a turn, you're immediately going to see that drop. Because there comes the target maneuver. Minus 50, minus 60, minus 70. So if you want to try and close the distance, don't go in a straight line. Throw that ship around as much as you can. And this is why that engine efficiency is so important. Your engine efficiency is going to make you speed up after you're done turning. And this thing is already very long, which means it's going to drift a little more causing you to lose more speed. But at the same time, um, that engine efficiency is pushing me right back up to that 60 knots. And all the while, the Comet just... I think actually this thing has a, a bug going on. There she goes. She just launched her torps again. That was more of a visual identification than a sonar detection. Her chance to hit is 0.5 with the mains, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. My chance to pen them is 8.1%, which is actually more than I was expecting from a little 2-inch gun. And now we're starting to take damage. She has few bulkheads. Considering that I have two 24-inch torpedoes ready to hit her, I might be able to get away with that. Maybe. Just turn. Unfortunately, there is one of my launchers on the stern, which is going to make it more difficult. Let's see. Safe launcher. Which means only fire if you have a decent accuracy. Torpedo, not yet. Torpedo is away. Both torps are away. She immediately detects, though. Her turning circle of 679 is going to be a problem for her. Now, unfortunately, minimum bulkheads means if you get penned and you start taking flooding, you are in trouble. And that's exactly what's happening. But I'm not the only one in trouble. Because the heavy cruiser just took two torpedo hits. She has a lot of flooding going on. And potentially so quickly that it might overwhelm her. Although it seems to be contained up to this bulkhead here. She's down to 15%. I think she's going to stop flooding there and just get it under control and fix it. And at this point, I am pretty much out of luck. There's not a whole lot that I can do except run away. Oh, she's down to 10? Okay. But I'm flooding as well. Now, let's compare prices on this ship. Let's say if I were to make something like this, it would cost me 44.5 million, which is a big price tag for a DD. Uh, you can get a, f a heavy cruiser for 54 million. A heavy cruiser like this, that is. So, in this case, um, depending on what the situation is, arguably you would want the heavy cruiser. It can just do more. This thing, very much a one-trick pony. Yes, it will go fast. Um, it will go... Wow, I actually got it. It will go exceptionally fast. But that's the only gimmick that it has. It will get you your 60 knots. But beyond that, um, encounter any kind of resistance and you're going to be in trouble. So why would you want to have a ship that does 60 knots? Well, I imagine you might want to have an assassin of sorts. I don't know what the campaign is going to bring, but let's say there is something on the map or one particular ship that you really need dead. A 60 knot ship could potentially race towards it and shut it down. Just eliminate it. It is very heavily dependent, however, on not taking fire, not getting attention from the rest of the fleet. Because those ships rarely operate alone, at least in the, the scenarios. Uh, definitely not in the Naval College, and most likely not in the campaign. But if you really want to drop off a few torpedoes at uh, close range, 
or at greater range, because that's something else that you could do, just change the oxygen for or change the fuel for the torps, then you might be able to get this thing to work. As for other ships, well, I couldn't get light cruisers to work. Uh, let me unlock all the hulls. There aren't that many hulls. There are only uh, currently a few of them available. I'm looking for the highest hull form factor, which is 115. 110, 119 for the modern light cruiser, 120 for the other modern light cruiser, which with her displacement is basically just a really big destroyer. 115, 67, 110, 110, and 110. The hull form decides how smoothly this thing is going to cut through the waves. If I want to try and put a massive engine on this thing, I simply can't. I cannot get that weight down below that 9,500 tons. It's not to do with armor. I tried stripping away all the armor. I tried going with oil. I couldn't get it done. Even if I just put all of this on zero, you can't get it done. Unfortunate. Because I would really like to see a very fast light cruiser. It's at this point going to have... Oh, actually, I clicked the different hull. It's going to have the same issues as the destroyer. Its longevity is going to be extremely limited and its armament is probably going to be equally terrible. So a destroyer is still the better assassin. Heavy cruiser wise, um, you can actually go pretty fast in a heavy cruiser. Heavies go up to 48 knots, which is something that depending on the hull form you can do. The heavy cruiser four, uh, four for example, has a hull form of 120. We got 122 here. It's also going to depend very much on which nation you take. There's another 122 and a 124, the Heavy Cruiser 1. If I were to make this thing as quickly as possible or as fast as possible, you could maybe... Well, no, you can't because you only got one tower and your tower is too heavy. And that's without any kind of upgrade. If I remove the armor... Mm, yes, you're getting below the threshold, but I still need to add a secondary tower. And I need to add at least a funnel and one gun, and you just cannot do that for that little displacement. Battle cruisers, then. Interestingly, for battle... Oh, actually, unlock all. For battle cruisers, it's actually pretty easy. And I was actually very surprised about this, but apparently in a battle cruiser, you can stuff a really big engine, and the ship doesn't really care. Um, I can push this thing all the way to 82,500 tons, which is... Uh, <laughs> that's a lot for a battle cruiser, but then again, this is the super battle cruiser hull. And I can push this to 44 knots. I can even have maximum bulkheads. And I can even put main towers on it and secondary towers and I can put guns on it. The ship doesn't care. And this is with turbines. I can even go at this with diesels and I have 40,000 tons remaining. So a ship like this, pretty damn doable. This is actually feasible. Engine efficiency. Well... <laughs> I would like to add a few more funnels to this thing to at least give it an engine efficiency around 60, 70, 80%. It's not easy to do. But of course, if you decide that you want a smaller secondary tower, um, like a compact one, in that case, you might even get up to, well, 70, 80, 98 even. So you can make a super fast battle cruiser. Keep in mind, it's going to cost you a, an arm and a leg, um, but you will get up to 44 knots. And it's actually remarkably simple for this particular ship. And then finally, the battleships. Now, we have tons and tons and tons of hulls, but again, we're looking for the best hull form. You got a 119 here for the Super Battleship 2, 18275. I think it's downhill from here mostly. Actually, this is 117. Yeah, this is still better than 119. Yeah. The battleship don't go as quickly, but for a battleship, it's pretty easy. Uh, the main, in this case, I can just stuff her with diesel engines, and I still have 50,000 tons to put on. 
I can put on maximum bulkheads, I can even put on maximum range, so that this thing is going to be able to cross the globe and back. Uh, I could put on a big tower. One thing I probably cannot get away with is having a ton of funnels on this ship. Because I wouldn't know where to stuff them. And that's a tricky thing. And also I haven't done the math for this one. For the destroyer I did. So I know exactly what funnel gives me the most funnel capacity per ton. I don't know what that is for this one. But let's say you go with the... Um, oh, that doesn't even fit. I have a 48.9 now. 80. If I go for this one, 83. Unfortunately, you cannot really move the main tower for farther forward. But you could go with a light tower. Giving you... Yeah, there you go. There's your 100% engine efficiency. 97 if you go with just the two. And then you can still boost the armor. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg and a kidney. But you can make a ship this fast. So, 60 knots. Is it doable? Yes. Uh, is it feasible? Slightly less so. But there are roles that you can imagine for a ship like that. And I'm interested to see what you guys think down below in the comments. What sort of ship would you make with a role or what role would you give a ship like that? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a like. And of course, I'll see you guys soon for more videos.